Well, as you and I are uh, enjoying the warm Australian weather down off the coast of Antarctica in the Southern Ocean, two ships from the Sea Shepherd are out there getting in the way of the Japanese whalers. The Bob Barker is down there and uh, had that run-in on Saturday, as you know. But the Sea Shepherd's other vessel, the Steve Irwin, is also down there and is already making a difference, stopping the whaling. And joining us is the captain of the Steve Irwin, Paul Watson. How are you, Captain Watson? Oh, pretty good, thank you. Hey, uh, first of all, uh, a lot of people up here in Perth and Fremantle and around Australia and on Twitter uh, wanted me to pass on their support. They're heading to your website, seashepherd.org, and making a donation and joining up. There's a lot of people really upset uh, with what the Australian government is doing, but very, very proud of what you and the crews of both boats uh, are doing down there, mate. So take some good vibes first up. Oh, well, thank you. You know, we, if it wasn't for the support of the people in Australia, we wouldn't be able to do this. I mean, uh, that support is absolutely essential. Now, you've been active this morning. I understand that after the incident with the Bob Barker, she was chasing the fleet. Uh, you knew the direction they were heading, and you literally popped out from behind an iceberg when they were about three clicks away this morning. Yes, the Japanese fleet was heading uh, northeast, uh, and they didn't know where we were, but we were actually heading southwest. So we were on a uh, you know, we're heading towards each other, and because we're each going about 15 knots, we close the gap at about 30 knots. And so when we were about 30 or four, 35 miles away, we just stopped the ship uh, beside an iceberg and waited. And so they didn't see us moving. They didn't know it was a vessel. They came right up onto us, and we were about three miles away before they noticed we were here. And I understand that, as is their practice, um, they started off with water cannon, but you had a bit of a reply, Paul. Yeah, they uh, turned their water cannons on us, but uh, we had installed a water cannon. Our water cannon happens to be more powerful than theirs, so uh, we were able to <laughs> see them dive for cover, uh, so we turned on our water cannon against theirs. Anyway, we had a bit of a water cannon fight, and then we fell back. And now, right now, the entire whaling fleet is uh, being pursued, and uh, this is the third day, the end of the third day of, uh, of a pursuit, and they haven't killed any whales. So if we can keep them running, they're not going to kill any whales. And I understand that you've been uh, on the tail of the Nishin Maru um, as they tried to load, wa load whales on board. Ironically, the news from Greenpeace ties in with what you're doing with that very ship. That was the ship involved in the, uh, the farcical charging of two activists who revealed a black market in whale meat in Tokyo. And they actually got their sample of this black market whale meat from the Nishin Maru. So... Um, you're also getting good vibes and support from uh, Greenpeace, Amnesty and the Tokyo 2 who go on trial for theft, would you believe, on Monday. Well, the entire whaling industry is corrupt and it's, uh, you know, the actual union that uh, supplies the, the, the crew for this is the Yakuza controlled union. So they're tied right in there with the Japanese underworld. So I'm not surprised at uh, all the black market trading and, and whale meat. The entire thing is really um, uh, a way of getting government money to subsidize this uh, poaching program that they're undertaking. And it's been shown to be bankrupt morally and in international law with news today from Greenpeace, Paul, that um, the United Nations has uh, ruled that the ar arrest of those two people and they're being held on charges violates five aspects of the United Nations Charter. And um, you'll be continuing, I guess, to try to get in the way of... Yes, um, but, you know, I think that we can keep them from whaling for the next three weeks. Uh, we have enough fuel to stay down here. We'll just keep on their on their trail. They can't load the whales onto, uh, any dead whales, onto the Nishamaru uh, because they can't get past us to do it. And uh, as long as we're here on their stern, they're not going to be killing any whales. And uh, that's going to severely impact their kill quotas. And for the sixth year in a row, we're going to negate their... Uh, their uh, profits. And that's the language they understand most, profit and loss. As long as we can continue to make them, get, uh, cause them to lose money every year, we're going to win this thing. And what's the latest news on, uh, on a, a possible replacement for the R.D. Gill? Uh, well, we're certainly, that was a big hit for us. It cost us about $2 million losing the R.D. Gill. And uh, so we're, we definitely are going to replace it. We need a fast uh, intercepting uh, vessel. Uh, the Steve Irwin and the Bob Barker can catch up and keep up with the uh, the Nishan Maru, but those harpoon vessels, we need something in excess of 23 knots in order to keep up with them. And uh, so if we're going to be fully effective, we need to have an interceptor vessel. I think they realize the potential of the Adi Gil. That's one of the reasons they deliberately took it out a month ago. They, they cut it in half and sunk it. 
And uh, what's really interesting here is that if I had a sunk a Japanese whaling vessel, I'd now be under arrest by the Australian Navy. Uh, and yet there hasn't been a single reprimand from Australia or New Zealand to the fact that a, a Japanese whaling vessel cut a New Zealand registered vessel in half and sunk it in the Australian Antarctic Territory. There hasn't been a word out of either government uh, reproaching uh, you know, Japan for that action. Um, it must be also galling to hear that um, the Australian government doesn't intend to do anything legally until at least July, but you'd be buoyed up by knowing that there is increasing coverage in the media and in online media like Twitter and blogs, Paul, that um, it's a morally bankrupt position by Canberra because it's very clear that they're not uh, acting in this case, at least partially because to do so could bring into uh, question Australia's international claims to some areas of the Southern Ocean. Well, Australia has laid claim to the Australian Antarctic Territory, and if you lay claim to it and declare sovereignty, then you should defend that sovereignty. And uh, I would certainly support Australia's uh, claim on that. Uh, you know, the argument is that, well, Japan doesn't recognize it. But, you know, Japan didn't recognize Australia's claim to Australia in 1942, so uh, that certainly isn't valid. But the fact is, is that uh, New Zealand and Australia are members of the IWC. They have a, a responsibility to uphold those regulations, and Japan is targeting endangered whales in an established whale sanctuary in violation of a global moratorium on whaling and in violation of the Antarctic Treaty. They're committing numerous international violations, and no, no government is stepping forward, forth to uphold those laws. We're operating under the uh, guidance of the United Nations World Charter for Nature, which allows for non-government organizations to intervene, and that's uh, why we can do what we're doing. Now, Japan calls us eco-terrorists, and everybody accuses us of being pirates and acting illegally. But the fact is, is that in the six years that we've been down here, we haven't been charged with a single crime, we haven't been sued, and we haven't injured anybody. I think we're acting as responsible as we possibly can by staying within the law and not hurting anyone. I've noticed increasing traffic to the uh, website seashepherd.org. People can make a difference uh, from their, their lounge rooms in Australia while you're down in the, in the freezing Antarctic waters, mate, and I'd urge them to go there. What's the temperature like and um, in the daylight, mate, what do you see when you're looking out over the bridge? Well, right now we're in very stormy conditions, so the ships are being knocked about quite a bit and we're still on the tail of the Nishan Maru. Uh, a lot of white water, uh, 50 knot winds, uh, it's very cold, and a lot of icebergs. And, uh, but hopefully within a day or two it'll level out and it'll be a little calmer. But uh, no matter what the weather is, we'll stick on their tail and not let them go. Uh, it's very hard up here in warm Perth, Paul, to have any sense of what you're going through down there, but that word picture really helped. You're literally dodging icebergs in heavy seas against uh, a hostile and increasingly violent uh, opponent. Yes, this, uh, this is really the most remote and hostile uh, uh, part of the planet, really. Uh, you know, if anything happens down here, the nearest rescue is about a week away. And, uh, you know, you can only live for about 10 minutes in these waters here. So uh, it's, it's very, very risky. Uh, and we certainly can't expect any help from the Japanese after they uh, cut the out of in half. They just kept going. They wouldn't even respond to the Mayday. Anyway, we're, we, you know, we knew the risk when we came down here. Uh, we lost the ship, but, you know, ships are expendable. The whales are not. So we're going we're gonna to keep to it. Well, we're really glad that you and your 41 crew and the 30 on the board, the Bob Barker, are down there in those conditions for us, mate. And uh, we'll keep spreading the word, and the mainstream media is continuing to pick it up, mate. It's time for the Australian government to act and uh, to uh, lay charges against uh, violence and aggression in, uh, in the waters that they claim to own. Well, there certainly should be some action taken. I mean, you just can't uh, ram, sink, and uh, destroy a $2 million ship. Uh, in the Australian Antarctic Territory in a New Zealand registered ship at that and just get away with it. But what New Zealand and Australian government have done is given a green light to the Japanese say, look, uh, we're not going to do anything. You guys can do whatever you want down there. In fact, the New Zealand foreign minister, uh, he actually made the statement, well, what do you expect when you go down there intending to kill people and break the law? Well, that's not our intention at all. I mean, I don't know why he's New Zealand's foreign minister. He sounds like more like the Japanese foreign minister. But, you know, both Australia and New Zealand, uh, the governments are just... Uh, so terrified of losing trade deals with Japan that Japan can get away with whatever it wants to. Well, it's not good enough, and uh, I'm going to let you get back to uh, keeping everyone safe down there, and re remarkably, you've been able to do that, Paul. Thanks for talking with us. We'll keep updating people, mate, and we'll keep uh, letting people know okay. what you're doing. We're very, very proud of you, mate. Okay, thank you very much.